Hi, this is Mr. Blakely, and in this video, I want to show you how to factor trinomials that are in the form of ax squared plus or minus bx plus or minus c. And these are trinomials that are unique because they have a coefficient in front of the first term. And I want to show you a method that takes a lot of the guesswork out of uh, factoring these trinomials. In the end, we're going to end up with two binomials, and there are two basic steps. The first one is we want to transform our trinomial into a quadnomial, so from three terms into four terms, by expanding the middle term, this negative four. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. We're going to use the x-factor method with a twist. As we've seen in the x-factor method, and let me move this up just a little bit. As we've seen in the x-factor method, we need two terms, two factors, that are going to add to give me this negative 4 and that are going to be multiplied to give me this negative 15. At least that's how we've been doing it. But now that we have a coefficient from the x-squared term, it's going to be a little different. We're still going to bring this negative 4 down. But instead of bringing the negative 15 down, we're going to multiply 4 times negative 15 and have a negative 60. So now I need two terms that multiply to give me a negative 60 and add to give me a positive 4. So I'm going to go through my factor pairs for 60. 1 and 60, 2 and 30, 3 and 20, 4 and 15, 6 and 10, oh, and I missed 5 and 12. And since this two, these two have to multiply to give me a negative 60, one of these is going to have to be positive, one is going to have to be negative. So which of these pairs, if I were to subtract them, would give me a negative 4? It would be the 6 and the 10. So I'm going to have a 6 and a 10. One has to be positive, one has to be negative, because the 4 is negative. I need the 10 to be positive, or negative, and the 6 to be positive. Now, normally this would have given me my two factors that for my binomials. But what this is actually going to do is it's going to allow us to transform our trinomial into a quadnomial. And so what I'm going to do is rewrite my problem. I'm going to write my first term, 4x squared. But instead of writing my second term, I'm going to use these two numbers. Plus 6x minus 10x. And then I'm going to write my last term, my minus 15. And what you can see is this problem and this problem are identical, except that my middle term, which had been a negative 4x, has now been transformed into a positive 6x minus 10x. What this then allows us to do is to take this formula with its four terms and factor it by the grouping method, the factor by grouping method. And so I've rewritten the problem uh, as, we've, as we've got it at this point, and I'm simply going to factor by grouping. So I'm going to look at my first two terms. What is in common with 4x squared plus 6x? Well, I have a 2x in common. So if I factor that out, I'm left with a 2x plus 3. So then I look at my second pair, negative 10x minus 15. What do they have in common? Well, I could pull out a 5. If I pulled out a 5, that would leave me with a negative 2x minus 3. But that's not the same binomial as this. In fact, it's the only the difference is that it has the opposite signs. So instead of pulling out just a 5, I'm going to pull out a negative 5. And what I will be left with is a 2x plus 3. These binomials are the same, so I'm going to factor those out. 2x plus 3, and then I'm left with my remainder, 2x minus 5. So I was able to factor this problem without guesswork. It takes a few steps, uh, but on complicated ones, it'll end up saving you time in the end.